Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, depending on where you are in the world. This is Gloria White and I am coming to you from Utah, USA. Today I'm going to be making two things. One is soft boiled eggs. The second is iced tea that is clear, crystal clear, and also is not bitter. So there's a couple of things you need to know about that. Now, to make soft boiled eggs, I put four eggs in this pot and covered them with about an inch of water. I put my burner on number six on an electric stove, and I'm going to wait for this water to come to a boil. Now, once it comes to a boil, I am going to boil it for, for um, one in a as soon as it comes to a boil, I'm going to turn the fire off and I'm going to let the egg sit in this water for one to one and a half minutes. Then I'm going to remove the eggs from the water. So that's started. Now, a little tip. If you have eggs, and even though the expiration date on your eggs is passed, there's a way to tell if your eggs are good or bad. If you put an egg in a cup of water and it floats, throw it away, it's a bad egg. If it doesn't float, then it's a good egg. So now I have these eggs in this water waiting for it to boil. In the meantime, I am going to start my iced tea. Now, this is a two quart pot and um, I put probably uh, two and a half to three inches of water in here. If I had to measure it, which I will do for the benefit of those who don't necessarily eyeball anything, I will measure it out so you will have an accurate recipe. Um, Two cups. Let's see how many more cups. All right. Using a two cup measuring cup. I used a cup, two, three, three and a half cups of water. So, I've never measured that before, but then again, I've never given anybody an exact recipe on how I make my crystal clear, not bitter tea, iced tea. Now, when I was a kid growing up, um, my mom would use loose tea. It didn't come in a tea bag. And um, she would bring it to a boil and boil it hard for about 10 minutes. That was the most bitter tea um, that you'd ever want to consume. But that's how they, that's how she made it. That's not how I make it. So I will have this water on the fire and I, and I have it on seven on my electric burner, so it'd be, be about a little above medium on your burner. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to watch this water. And when the first tiny bubbles start coming up from the bottom of my pot, I will take it off the burner, add my tea bags, set the timer for 10 minutes, and at that time, I will carefully lift my tea bags out, put them in the sink, and that's it. Do not squeeze your tea bags. Do not press them. Just and don't just hold them up over your pot waiting for all the dregs to dip to drip out. You want to remove the tea bags as quickly as as possible. Now, if you um, buy a better quality tea bag, you will have even clearer iced tea but I just buy the cheapest I can find like Winco I just bought this it's like a dollar 
for 100 tea bags. And it's probably about the cheapest thing that you can make to drink. Now some people like sweet tea, especially people in the South. I'm not one of them. Even though I was born and raised in New Orleans, I do not care for a really sweet iced tea. It never feels like it quenches my thirst and it always leaves me feeling like I need something to drink. But a lot of people do like that and they would probably put two cups of sugar in a gallon of uh, iced tea. I myself, I use seven eighths of a cup of just regular sugar um, and then I um, well, after my tea is steeped for the 10 minutes, I will pour the tea in, in over the sugar, stir the sugar up so it melts with the hot tea. Then I will top it off with cold water and refrigerate it. And if I want a glass right away, I just put a lot of ice in my glass and um, pour it over the ice and it will be just fine. You don't have to chill it in the refrigerator, um, but it's best to keep it in there after you make it. Um, whoops, just tore a tea bag. Do not use torn tea bags. You tear a tea bag, um, put it on the side. You can put it as compost in a compost pile or um, take it out and Put it on the ground and sprinkle it over your grass. It's an organic matter and it will help things grow. I use seven tea bags. I don't care for um, exceedingly strong tea, but as you make your tea, you can decide if you want it to be weaker or if you want it to be stronger. If you want stronger iced tea, you will simply use more tea bags. If you want a weaker iced tea, you will use less. So I suggest you start with the seven and go from there. Seven is my perfect iced tea for me. So. Anyone who ever drinks my iced tea wants to know how do I make my iced tea. So I figured, well, I'll just make a video and anybody wants to know how to make my tea in the future, I will just um, point them to my video. Or if I'm, you know, just chatting with somebody, I'll just explain it to them. But, you know, um, it's nice to have a visual recording so you can go back and check to make sure you're getting it all right. So. I just gather up all the tags and strings on my tea bags and I see that there's a little bit of steam rising from my pot so I'm going to take a peek in there and see if I'm getting any bubbles. Not yet. And so I have my tea bags ready. Be sure you don't put these where your burner's going to catch them on fire. Now, my eggs are starting to boil. As you can see, the little bubbles are coming up, which indicates it's getting ready to go to a full boil. Now, once it's at a full rolling boil, I will turn the fire off, take the pot off the burner, and leave it set for one to one and a half minutes. I wish I had some of those little fancy egg servers that, you know, you see people put their boiled egg in and um, it's kind of cute but me um, I don't have that so I'm just going to use a bowl and so now the eggs are almost boiling this is going and I'm going to get my tea pitcher out so I can put my sugar in it and have it ready there's my tea pitcher. Yeah. The 
vanity pitcher lid. So that's good. Now I'm going to get my measuring cup and I'm going to measure out seven eighths of a cup of sugar. And I'm going to go be right behind you here where my sugar canister is. And I use these popcorn tins. You know, the popcorn you get at Christmas. I save those tins. Now, this is boiling. I'm going to take it off the burner. Turn the burner off. Set the timer for one minute and 30 seconds. And my tea water, see how the little tiny bubbles are just about starting to let go of the bottom of the pot. You can see that they're down in the pot now, but they're just getting ready to start coming up. And that's when I'm going to take my teapot off of the burner and add my tea bags. Almost ready. But I've measured out my 7 eighths of a cup of sugar. And I'm going to just put it into the bottom of my pitcher. Now that is ready when, once the um, tea has steeped for, once I put the tea bags in, I set the timer for 10 minutes and I take that pot off the burner. So she's almost there. And then I will pour, lift the tea bags to out don't just let them stay there and drip because there's tiny little dregs that will seep out the bottoms of your tea bags and you don't want that in your tea it makes your tea bitter a lot of people squeeze their tea bags with a spoon against the side of the pot don't do that um, or they take a spoon and they wrap the tea bag around the, the the, they have the tea bag on the spoon and they wrap the string around it and pull it so that it squeezes the juice from the tea bag. It'll make your tea bitter every time. So don't do that. Okay, so my bubbles are just now starting to come up from the bottom of my pot. That is as hot as I want my water to be. When you have making tea, different kinds of tea require different temperatures. So you'd want to check your box and see if it tells you. Now that's all I'm going to do is just swish them a little bit so that they're wet. And then I'm going to set my timer for, and I'll have to set it on my phone, for 10 minutes. Because I already have the timer busy on the stove for the, for the um, eggs. Oh my gosh. I just realized I set my timer on there for, <laughs> oh my gosh, not, not a minute and a half, but an hour and a half. Okay, the, the eggs are ready to come out, so I'm just going to use this to get my eggs out. I'm going to just scoop them out and gently put them in a bowl and the eggs are done. I'm going to set them on the side for a minute and I'm going to pour this water out. Now the tea is steeping and now what you want to do with your eggs in order to eat a softball egg you want to take a knife and you want a really nice sharp knife and I just realized I cut something with this okay now then now these eggs are going to be hot, so you don't want to burn yourself. Turn the teapot burner off. So you can take your egg 
like this and cut the top off. I know that sounds crazy, right? But if you just give it a little whack, then you can cut the top off. If you have a nice sharp knife. And I left them in there too long because I set the burner for <laughs> the timer for an hour and a half instead of a minute and a half. But if this had been on the correct time in a minute or a minute and a half, this yolk would have been nice and runny, which would have been a perfect soft boiled egg. But as it is, it is not a soft boiled egg. As you can see, the yolk is pretty much cooked. So when you set your timer, do a minute and a half, not an hour and a half. Silly girl, it's still going to be delicious. So a minute and a half, take your eggs out of the hot water and take your knife and whack the side of the egg and then cut the top off and you would have a nice runny gooey egg in the middle there. Let me taste this. Mm. Just that 30 little seconds because it sat in the water for two minutes instead of a minute to a minute and a half. Pretty much cooked the whole entire yolk. Yep, cooked the whole yolk. But I could chop these up and make an egg salad sandwich, which I think I will. That sounds good to me. So that's the um, failed <laughs> timing of the soft boiled egg. But you can see it, it doesn't take long for that yolk to cook, so you really want to watch your timer. So we have like seven minutes left before the tea will be done steeping. We'll come back. Failure is not an option. We will do soft boiled eggs. I put another four eggs in the pot. And the other thing I didn't consider, because I usually use jumbo eggs, but the food bank gave me these. So they're this very small eggs compared to a jumbo egg. So I would only leave these set after the water comes to a boil for one minute and then take them out. So we're going to do that this time. And I'm going to clean my knife while I'm waiting for the water to boil in those eggs because I really had my mouth set for soft boiled eggs. But egg salad sounds really good to me too. I'm even considering making some bacon. So we have four minutes left on the tea, waiting for the water to boil on the eggs, and I'll be back. Very quickly, I'm going to show you the difference in the size between a jumbo egg and a medium egg. Can you see the difference? Isn't that, isn't that um, a big difference? Yeah, so you could see where this one we could do a minute and a half and it would be a soft yolk. Um, this one, um, probably I'm thinking maybe even 45 seconds in the water after you get it off the burner. But I like jumbo eggs and that's what I buy when I go to the store when they have them. And they're just a lot more satisfying. You don't need as many of them to fill up. <laughs> I'll be back. Okay, so we're about three, two, one minute, seconds, and the tea is steeped for 10 minutes. Now you see in there, see how the tea bags are just laying there? I'm not going to lift these out until I get over to my pitcher right here. I'm going to take these tea bags up and out of this pot. I'm not going to let them drip or anything. And then I'm going to pour my tea in this pot with the sugar so that I can stir it up and melt it while it's hot. 
and my sugar will be nice and dissolved. It's hard to dissolve sugar in cold water, but this will do it in just a matter of seconds. Anything I can do to make my life quicker, faster, better, I'm on it. Okay, that's it. Now, that's done. And I will fill up my pitcher with cold water up to about right this line on my gallon tea pitcher. Whereas if I put this lid on, it would be right there at the bottom of that lid. So I'm going to do that now. And I'm trying to keep an eye on those eggs so that I can get them off the burner as soon as they start to boil. It is so hot here today. It's about 95, 96 degrees. But the sun, because our magnetic field is so weak, the UV rays are coming through. It's like being microwaved. And I want to encourage everyone to stay hydrated. And if you're working outside, take frequent breaks so you don't get overheated. that lid is where my tea, iced tea comes to. Now I'm still watching my eggs, but I'm going to get some ice. And I'm going to pour myself a glass of tea because I don't want to wait for it to cool. I am terribly thirsty. I've been out in the heat myself. And now I want something besides water. Sometimes water just doesn't do it. And there's a glass of tea. Well, we're going to have to move something in the refrigerator. But look how clear that is. Do you see how clear this tea is? It is just so clear. And that means it's not going to be bitter at all. Mm. Oh my gosh. I need more. <laughs> I am so thirsty. But this really quenches my thirst. It's lovely. But again, can you see how clear that is? That's, that's how I like my iced tea, and it will not be bitter, I promise you. If you've had someone's tea and it's bitter, or you've been making tea and it's bitter, this is how you make it so it'll never be bitter again. The taste is so lovely. Now I can get it in the fridge. There we go. So that's done. And the eggs are almost boiling. But we're going to watch these little babies close this time because I don't want another semi soft <laughs> boiled egg. I'm going to shell these and, and, and cut, chop, mash them up with a fork and put some mayonnaise in here and salt and pepper and then I will have a delicious egg salad that I can eat on bread. I like it on white bread but I especially like it on toasted white bread. Now if you don't have a toaster you can put your oven on broil and you can put your oven rack in the middle rack put your bread directly underneath where the burners are there's heating elements in an electric stove and then watch 
and when it gets toasted just right take it out and then you can put your egg salad on and um, it's delicious and it's really nice way to have egg salad and if you make it ahead of time you can put it in the fridge and it will chill up and then you have a delicious cold sandwich but again, <laughs> I'm hungry. I'm not going to wait for it to chill. I'm just going to enjoy it immediately. But if these eggs come out right, I'll just eat them. So we're almost boiling. I wonder how everybody's doing. I know several people now that have been exposed or who and who are some have been exposed and are sick with the COVID um, fortunately they're only having mild symptoms but vitamin D they've done a study they suspected that vitamin D adequate amounts are um, are I should say low amounts of vitamin D are inadequate amounts of vitamin D in your bloodstream directly affect your fatality rates so I encourage everyone to go to their doctor and have your blood tested for vitamin D and see if you're um, low on vitamin D because um, you can't tell if you're low on vitamin D any other way you have to have a blood test done and depending on how low your vitamin D level is, the doctor can advise you on how much you should be taking every week in order to get that back up. Okay, these eggs are boiling. I'm taking them off the burner now. And I'm going to set my timer on my phone. Be right back.